Atlas is attempting to balance beam. Atlas, oh, down goes Atlas. Down goes Atlas. He's in a lot of pain, lying motionless on the mat. I think he's down for the count. Wait a minute. We're starting to see some motion from Atlas. He seems to be standing back up, but that doesn't look natural to me. Ooh, I think in that fall, Atlas may have broken a little bit more than just these nuts. <laughs> Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. That is a big thanks to Scott. I will put a link to the video online on X because you have to go there and you have to give it, you know, a like or something like that. That needs to go viral because that's just, just great. Um, also, before we start, this has nothing to do with Boston Dynamics, but check this out. We retired, we recently retired our FSD beta tester shirts. Now we have full self-driving supervisor. So that's cool, right? <laughs> so... Scott, yep, you'll we, have your. We sim, get right? promoted. We get promoted to supervisor. We promoted. We're now super. We're now middle management. So we're mm -hmm. the first people to be cut. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Cuts have to happen. So, all right. So today we are going to talk about Boston Dynamics and um, what is it? Uh, the <laughs> the king is dead. Long live the king. So for a long time, Atlas was king, and then he was dead, and now he's back again. So yeah. Let's and that was a, a pretty short morning period, I must say. Yeah, it was. Uh, we, so clearly they had things in mind when they decided to retire old Atlas. So um, before we start this video, just real quick, some things about old Atlas. Number one, I mean, how long has he been around? I mean, he's he's like a granddaddy. He's been um, around for I mean, more, uh, 10 years, but I think there's been, a, you know, the current version of Atlas, I'm not quite sure, but it certainly goes back more than a decade. The whole yeah. project. Yeah. Okay. So we got that. Uh, number two, he's mostly primarily hydraulics. Right? Hydraulic, correct. Yeah. Uh, gigantic battery. Pit. In fact, actually, I don't think it was called Atlas back in the day, but the first I ever saw of Boston Dynamics was the one that actually had like a lawnmower, like the, vroom, you know, they had like a, a gas engine on the back of it running. the. That was a loud, loud um, robot. Yes. And, but yeah. So impressive. I think some of the, the first ones I had running around in the, in the woods were, were gas powered. Then they finally yeah. went to battery powered and then, you know, they kept on making refinements uh, on Atlas, but you know, the whole time it was hydraulically powered. And when you look at the retirement video, you do see a lot of like ACL blowouts in there where right. it's like hydraulic <laughs> yeah, fluid, exactly. like spraying all over the place. So uh, yeah, that, that, that poor bot took uh, a lot of punishment. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and actually one of the cool things about it was it was kind of built with a roll cage because I'm sure it was very heavy. Mm. Um, oh, it and, was and, almost 200 pounds. Woo, woo, woo. at 411 yeah uh so you know so it was it was it was a big boy and very very um hefty so we'll just go ahead and watch this video i'm leaving the sound on on this on purpose because one of the curiosity one of the interesting aspects of this is just the sound that's in the background of this so looks dead <laughs> all right so what do you got for us okay well when when we go to the very first frame laying down there there was there's a lot of things i first saw it just on my small screen so um right. there's a lot of things i kind of missed at first and then when you get it up on a big screen you can notice a lot of things so you're noticing that sound at the beginning you could hear like a lot of fans whining and right. I assume it's not just like fans that happen to be in the environment. It's more likely the fans from the bot itself, because you can see there is a lot of ventilation uh, throughout yes. the entire bot everywhere. Yes. There's there's many, many different uh, places for that. Um, the other thing you'll notice is the, the hand. I mean, that's one of the things I, I looked at after the fact, after looking at everything else at first. But you'll notice that right. hands are not like normal hands. They're kind of gripper. They announced that they're going to have different kinds of grippers to go on there. But we've actually seen that hand before, and that was on an old Atlas about a month ago when it was picking up the struts and moving them around. It was using this three-finger gripper. And the thing about that three-finger gripper is it was um, double-jointed <laughs> and that it could do, let's say, unnatural movements with a hand. Right. So it sort of already was foreshadowing that Boston Dynamics is thinking of doing that, of extending the range and not caring about what's the normal human range of motion. And we certainly see that when it stands up and yeah, it's been pointed yeah. out today by you know myself and many other people that this kind of symmetry they have and the fact that the body could just sort of 
switch which way is the front for the legs and for the torso right without really the whole body turning means it can pivot a lot faster it can change direction quicker than a lot of the other bots and, and we can sort of right. see that when it goes through here but you know when you're starting out the first thing is like it's down the ground and it's it's almost like reminiscent of like you know kind of down for the count but then coming back to life so i think right. there was right. kind of a you know the going towards the, the phoenix rises sort of thing here and uh and I think they had been sort of telling us for a while because Boston Dynamics was almost their own best critic. Yes. They were actually on Lexus and everyone else was like, man, they keep on, you know, not saying very nice things about Atlas. I mean, they're kind right. of praising it, but saying like, <laughs> stop telling us that, you know, it's a commercial product. We're not going to do it. It's, you know, it, and it's been a very faithful development platform that has spawned all these other companies. So a lot of companies can trace right. back to, to Atlas. So there's no doubt about that. Atlas belongs in a museum, the Smithsonian Museum specifically, um, right. and you know, front and center in the robotics um, uh, exhibit, no doubt about it. But the first thing I kind of noticed that most people have noticed is that, okay, you're laying actually, down. While, while we're on the yeah. subject of grippers, this was the yeah. AI grid uh, put this out today. And yep. not, not here, but let's get to the moment where um, he specifically shows old Atlas with the three-pronged yep. grippers here. Yep. So really cool and they're able to kind of rotate around and and yeah know, they they can they, that. that's right they're, they're bi-directional yeah. and that yeah that, the finger can either be open this way so the knuckles are double jointed they can go both ways right. so right. you know we'll see there that you can decide yeah. which is your thumb the opposing <laughs> hand right and so it has a certain amount of compliance towards certain things but still is more of a mechanical gripper for an industrial right. kind of application as right. opposed to one that you would expect to be using working in the kitchen or folding laundry or, or doing something like that. Right. So right. that tells me that their focus right from the beginning is our applications like this. And they already right. said it in the press release because they reminded everyone that they're owned by Hyundai and they expect to be, you know, Hyundai is, is looking at how to improve automation and that Atlas is going to be part of that. And they right. will be doing pilots very soon. And we just can speculate whether the pilots are in the U S or whether they're um, going to be over right. in Korea, which, might also make sense because there are no Korean humanoid bots that I'm aware of. But the first thing here you're going to try to figure out is like, um, is he laying face down or face up? Because <laughs> you're not quite sure which is, is the face. And right. you can't really tell because the knees are like the wrong way. And not that when right. people are down, usually the knees are either pointed up or down. They're not pointing sideways. So that's already right. the first indicator that something's going to be a bit odd here. And then yeah. as we see he's going on getting up, I had to look at it like three times. Like, wait a minute, what did I just see here? I, I really thought I was watching. You know, the Terminator when the yes, Terminator. Dude, there was a scene like that. The bad guy, and he like flips around and comes the other door. It's like it felt very much. It was like right that. out of Terminator. No, no <laughs> doubt about it. Now, contortionists can do something like that, but not quite like that. I mean, right. That, that, that is quite the move, and the I, I think I said earlier today. I mean, the, the first thing is when it started to move and came up. Is that it reminded me of this the line from Poltergeist, you know, they're back. So <laughs> and then you know, the next thing is a little bit of exorcist vibe there and lost in space vibe and right. a little bit of terminator here. So, you know, go ahead and pick what you want. But the, the main thing is they're, they're <laughs> saying we're back in the Valley game. reference. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's crazy yes. it's going on. Yes. Um this demonstrates an absolute kind of the level of engineering to get to be able to manipulate these things and have the have the range of motion be as big as it is for so many joints all at once is really impressive. Well, part of it is is some really good choice on what they did in the kinematics. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. they've gone and they they've studied uh, you know, obviously from from their own experience. They've learned what's going to work. They made the decision to really it's. I'd be very careful. This not necessarily double jointed. It's more or less it's an, ex an extended range of motion. Right. The reason I say that is the knee is not hyper extendable. It, it can only flex one way. Yes. So, but the actuators you can rotate the right. leg around so that it's effectively. Yes, hyper exactly. Yeah. Now the actuators are all rotary actuators. There are no linear drives anywhere, but mm. there are some joints which are actuated with what appears to be kind of connecting rods which are connected right. to a rotary actuator. So there's, you know, right. so it looks like a linear kind of motion using to do that. But with the knee, they have built in that hamstring, a really big um, servo motor in there with a connecting rod down to the knee to be able to do it. And, and once you do that, you cannot hyperextend the knee. It only goes one way. Right. The elbow, they've done something differently there. They actually have the actuator there 
serving both as the joint and as the the actuation. And because they don't have that linkage mechanism there, they could potentially, they're not showing it here, they could double joint that wrist. But the main okay. thing is they've got symmetry about the shoulder because you get this range of motion on the shoulders that is not possible for a human. And what they've also done down here on the hip that allows them to sort of change the direction very quickly. Right. And so right. it's more of that they have a mirrored symmetry as opposed to being double jointed. But They've gone on and, and extending the, the range of motion for sure. And I've got, right. you know, some little graphics at some point we can go through and, and break down uh, some of the kinematics when we get ready right. to really nerd out on some of this. So, and well, and one interesting thing is there were people, I watched this very carefully because there were people going like, wow, it's got 360 degree range of motion. I don't believe that's true. I think it's about 180 on the, like if you watch the torso, so it's going to spin, the head yeah. spins. The torso spins, they both spin. They come back, right, okay, right. And then so, they go back again. So they're basically- Yeah, you, you got to be careful. Sometimes when people say 360, it means it can kind of, it, it's plus or minus 180 usually. In this right. case, you're right. You, you'll notice that when it spins around that the head counter rotates. There's a favorite direction for it to do. So it unwinds itself in a way. Yeah. So you may not have a full 360 in the head. It, you don't need a full 360. No. You don't need no. to, you know, an owl doesn't do a 360. An owl only goes halfway. And that might be why they have that kind of that shape of the head also, because that looks almost like an owl's face. I know. It's really, and then it looks like there might be one, two, three, four, like several cameras in there. Um, it's hard to tell how many cameras. You can't see them, but I'm assuming all the cameras are behind the glass. We can't yeah. actually see them. Uh, right. They are there. And now a lot of the other joints, I'm pretty sure, are plus or minus 180 or close enough to it. Some of right. them might be beyond it. You can't just keep on winding, you know, in theory, you keep winding them up because it doesn't look like there's a mechanical restriction, but there right. is cabling that's going through that's going to wind up and prevent you. Exactly. Going. That's the problem. It's yes. going to, I, I also think that this, this, this hip motion as it begins walking backwards is very impressive because it's walking as its hips are rotating around. Yes. Yes. And so again, it's think, like walking think about backwards it. and then forwards. <laughs> it's like, think about it. That is it, crazy. It's, it just picked up a box. Imagine it just picked up a box. Now you start right. walking backwards because you get your knees there. Now you pull old. Now the box is in the forward direction. Right. So you're still moving towards your destination as you're bringing the box around. And that right. means you save a lot of cycle time. So right. we've been criticizing the pivots on all the other bots. They're just really slow. We've heard it's mainly a software thing because, you know, learning right. to walk and balance is difficult. But look at that. I mean, that's, that's really quick holding your balance. Throwing that knee out like that, I mean, rotating around that structure and then coming the other way and continuing to move, that's pretty right. impressive dynamics. There's no yeah. doubt about that. that. Just being able to pull that trick is something else. And, and of course, the head being able to rotate straight backwards means you can see going that direction before you flip the upper body. Right, right. So, now, we don't know if they have cameras in the back. Is Now, right. uh, Robert Plater did do an interview, I think, yesterday, and it was embargoed until this morning, uh, about this and was asked about the head. And he said part of the reason for the movement ahead, because there wasn't really any reason since Atlas didn't really have a head. Um, right. He said a lot of it is uh, for socialization. The same thing that James mm. Dama had mentioned was the reason right. for the movement of right. the Tesla head is it right. had nothing to do with the cameras being looked at. It was being able to show intent and, you know, what it's doing, what its state is in. So there may be a little bit of moving it around. It, it's hard to say, you know, where are the cameras yeah. Well, I think I there's, would some think there's some from the side, that, but you, know, you can't like, from the side from, I see from something that here, face. something here, something here. Some so it looks like there's maybe four across the top and then something across the middle. Um, but interestingly enough, no obvious LIDAR. Uh, as opposed to yeah. Atlas, original Atlas, that so had the big spinny thing in his chest. Um right. so right. that's right, that's cool. Right. <laughs> now um you, you'll notice as, as you go through, there are all, all kinds of events built in all over the place, even the back of the elbow and everything else. So they're really concerned about airflow, which is probably why we're hearing uh, the fans running like crazy. Right. And if you look at the head, you might think, okay, is, is there anything in the head? Because the other bots, they don't really have anything in the head. The head's yeah. more or less just there as a pedestal for the, the, the cameras. And the cameras are not going to produce a whole lot of heat. So if you look right there, there's a you lot can of see, well, bending. wait a minute. There's quite yeah. an opening. There's a lot of airflow going around there. Right. There's a lot going on inside of that head. <laughs> and as well as there's an antenna, which right. I'm not sure why they need an antenna. Um, because, I mean, most cell phones don't have big antennas uh, in there. You know, it, it might be for security reasons to make sure you have a really strong connection in right. a factory environment where 
you can have a, a lot of RFI being produced from welding systems and everything else. So that might be a kind of a strong right. connection, but it means they clearly have some electronics up there that need to be cooled. And they may have actually intentionally moved some of that up there for a reason. And that right. is most of the other bots, all of the smarts are down in the, in the torso, which right. means it's occupying space in the torso. If you can move it up there, you now have a little bit more room in the torso to put what in there, John? Batteries. Batteries, batteries. Oh, and that's going to get batteries. us. batteries. Yes, and that's going to get us to one of the design elements. I mean, if you want, I've got my, my nerdy little slides here. We sure. can start to look uh, at a few things. Yeah, here. hold on. Let me take that out and go like this. I I'm don't know. Can you, can you share with me or not? I don't know. I can one. share. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Right so um, uh, the batteries, also the... Um, um, I, 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 one thing that we need to touch on, and I don't know if anybody's talked about it is how it was doing these motions. Was it pre-programmed? Was it being manipulated by an, um, an operator? Was it neural networks that learned how to do this? I mean, that's a huge, that makes a big difference. How exactly? Yeah. I, I imagine they're probably using whatever their, their old stack is. And these motions were not taught Tell robotically, I can tell you that. I, I sure hope not, unless I had a contortionist. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> I mean, unless it, you a can do Jim Henson puppeteer. Yeah. You know, you know the old Jim Henson, you know the Muppets and the pub. Some of those yeah. puppeteers were very good at manipulating objects that were could do crazy things like that. So it it would be within the realm of possibility, but I would not expect it to be right. that way. All so, right, oh, we've got a shoulder. Okay, so what, what I want to show on, on, on the shoulder is that... Yeah, look at that venting. You're right. It is everywhere. Even Oh, yeah, you got, you got little vents here. You get vents there. You're, yeah. you're going to see them everywhere. The main thing with shoulder is that I always kind of criticize the, the others of having um, the, the first joint horizontal, and I'd like to see a little bit of angle. Yeah, they get a little bit of angle here. You know, it would be nice to be a bit more, but at least they got one. And the other thing is they've thrown this offset in. So normally right. the shoulder joints, if you take these three axes, they typically will all be coincident to the same point. But you right. see this rotation here in the center yeah. uh, is not in the same location as where these things are. So they put a little bit of an offset there. And uh, PND Robotics was the first one I saw doing that. I'm going to show it at the end what they they did that also kind of a similar thing. Um, and now then, let's see. So here, another little thing I noticed is that this is down here on the leg. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the leg that rotates uh, that rotational servo is not actually in, let's say, that upper leg oh. unit there, but oh. is actually here. And then you see the axis that rotates there. So this is like a combined housing. Something wow. I would like to see Tesla do because Tesla is just taking the two motors and stacking them together. Right. And that's what a lot of the others are doing. They're just kind of stacking them together. And they're like, rather than stacking them together, let's make a single unit out of it. And that way you can probably use uh, common electronics, uh, power, everything else, as well as that housing. So they've done a little bit there to optimize that. That's what it looks like to me. Very um, cool. And so I just wanted to kind of highlight that out, uh, what's going on there. The other thing is that when you look at this, just as it's getting up, you're going to see what are the connecting rods here. Yep. So yep. these connecting rods go back to right over here. This is like, this is a big honking motor that's back in here that is probably connected into this. And that is what uh, is actually actuating the knee through that connecting rod. So wow. we've seen that in some of the other bots, but just if anyone was right. wondering. So you know, so it, in that case, where is the actual motor itself? The actual, oh, the motor's way way up high. Way down, okay, okay. It, it, yeah, it's, it's it's the part that's up up much higher. And okay. a lot of the other bots, they all do that too. So if you look at the unit tree and, and others, that's how they do the actuation. They don't actually have an actuator built into that joint. Yeah. Because well, they need a lot of power. They need to get the lever arm. They need right. to get the, the and yeah. So you need this really big motor that's kind of up where you have the space and that way you don't have to worry about it. But once you do that, you cannot have it be double jointed. Right. I mean, it just was able to go one way. And yeah. the Tesla bot elbow is actuated in a similar way, except it uses a linear drive as opposed to a rotary drive to, to make right. that particular motion. Okay. Come down here on the, um, the pelvis, you notice they did mount this at a pretty strong angle. Yeah, that's steep. Yeah, and I like that. You know, and and that's that's part of what gives it the flexibility to turn around is the fact that they they did it that way, and it also what it means is that it, this axis of rotation uh, is at a different axis of rotation down here. Whereas for the Tesla bot, they're kind of lined up, and that right. axis of rotation is very low. Right. This is much closer, more natural than uh, human movement by right. coming up with this because that's basically how our pelvis is shaped. So. Yeah. 
Second time we've seen it again, PND Robotics did this already. And I'm going to show an image of, of what they did. We talked about they were a small startup in China. But when I looked at what they did, it's like, these were the only guys that actually went out and looked closely <laughs> at it cool. at what they should do. Okay. Yeah. Now, my biggest criticisms with this version of Atlas is like, any everything below the elbow, forget about. I don't like. Everything above it, they've they've done some pretty good design choices. So this wrist here is a very bulky wrist. So the red axis yeah. is the first rotational axis you have that allows you to do this with your wrist. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, way up here, I mean, it's like almost up like in the middle of, of your, your right. arm is right. where they're doing this movement. You know, that funky, small yaw oh, movement. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what the heck yeah. is it doing way back there? And then right. down a little bit closer, they have, you know, this movement. Right. Now, of course, what they can do is they can move with that kind of configuration, the hand way more than we can because again right. remember they're into extended range on everything yeah, exactly so, so that means they can take their hand and make it go like 90 degrees back and forth <laughs> so you, you're going to see some configurations of this thing where you go oh that's weird and of course they can also do something that i can't do so how how much can you move can you can you move your palm see all the way over here i can no. get the face that way and no. i come around and around and you know if I'm not cheating with my elbow, I really have to I, do it this I way. So I, go there. I cannot bring it all the way around. You know, so yes. if I use my, if I get my shoulder in there, I can cheat. And it looks like I can get my palm to go 360. But when you really look at this way, you can't. They can right. go plus or minus 180 easily more if they want to. It's just a question of how much everything winds up in there. So they have way more degrees of freedom than is possible. And then, of course, the hand's not a real hand, but Right. I'll give them props to the fact that they designed it in an interesting way to be able to reconfigure it uh, very easily. But they have a lot of range of motion there. That's right. way more. It's not a typical kind of human end effector or gripper, but they talk about having multiple types. And I don't know if the multiple types means what they're going to add on the end here or whether right. it means like that whole unit pops out and they put some hands. That's, that's possible. Yeah. And and really interesting. I mean, the fingers are what's yeah. the genius of it because the fingers are basically yep. bi-directional. So the knuckles yes. can... It can flip around and act like a thumb instead of a finger. Yep. Which is yeah, really it's hard cool. to see in this. You have if you look yeah. at the video from about a month ago that they released, it's in right. there. When that yeah. um okay. So now this is where it gets really innovative. This is a close-up of the torso. Right. It's a three degree of freedom torso. Um has way more flexibility than Optimus because Optimus has only two degrees of freedom in the torso. But right. and and ironically. Optimus cannot lean forward because the torso doesn't have a degree of freedom to lean forward. You think, well, my goodness, that's extremely important. It's like it can't lean forward to the torso. It can lean forward at the hip. So in other words, the hip joint, you know, way down here, right. does double duty and Optimus for not only making the legs go forward, but also allowing it to move forward, which means its entire torso kind of moves forward. But then again, a lot of us, that's how we tend to lean forward. Also, we don't necessarily bend in our stomachs, um, right. but you can, but, so they also have this platform that's able to rotate probably, you know, plus or minus 180 degrees, which we can see, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe it's just hundred, maybe it's zero to 180. I'm not sure, but I, I would think it's going to be more than that because you, you'd want to be able to do a little bit of left, right. movement. Yes, exactly. At least plus or minus 90 or something like right. that. Right. Uh, if, and so they may have it set up to make sure at least in one direction, they're able to flip around the um, now the way they do, they can also do this side to side movement because right. right in here, right in there is the joint. This is like this hardened joint or almost like, looks like a universal joint. Right. And these two connecting rods are like, the things that allow us to do it. Just yeah. the way we talked about with the wrist before, both yeah. of them moving together is going to cause it to lean forward. Them moving differentially means you lean left or you lean right. And then you can combine the two to get that. So it seems like a complicated, me oops, uh, let me get back to that. It seems like a rather complicated mechanism to do that. And why would you want to do it? Now, we've seen this already somewhere else. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. This, they did not waste this design. Right, right. So the waste is using the same similar Wait. design that we see in the figure bot. <laughs> And, a, and figure is also way into rotary axes. Uh, <laughs> and if you look at it by doing this, you parallelize the whole problem in that they've got the servo up here and they get the servo up there. And the same thing we can assume that this right. might somehow be part of the servo. Or what is it? So it's just down low. Now I'm going right. to back up for a second because 
you see the stacking of these axes, right? If you look at the Sanctuary Phoenix bot, and I think even um, might be the Mauricia or um, Unit Tree, they have a lot of movement in their their torsos because it's like, oh, we want to have three degrees of freedom because Tesla doesn't, right. and right. they built it this way. And you see what you have is you get this very long stack that starts here and right. has to go all the way up to there before it ends. So if you take that long stack and stack it on up there, guess what you cut into? Uh, oh, I see. So now you're you, dealing with your torso. You lose you torso take, space. And yeah. Take away. That's why both of them are doing it is because they want to reduce the actuator space down here and then right. preserve a lot of the volume of the torso. So that's what I think Boston Dynamics is. It, but, you know, again, as with all these other bots, the preponderance of the weight of the robot is going to be in the torso then because the batteries are very heavy, which means you're going to have to have big motors to move those suckers around, um, yeah. which we've seen with, with Tesla and I guess figure as well. So, yes. um, yeah. Yeah. And you, you get a good lever arm here and, and this also is, is a pretty stiff assembly as well. Right. So that's really pretty good to kind of keep the stiffness that you don't want to have in there. So there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to do that, even though it seems a bit more complex, but it's very compact. Gives you the degrees of freedom you need because the thing with these other torsos, again, it kind of goes back to the risk that um, uh, Boston Dynamics came up with. It's got way more range of motion than you need compared to a right. human wrist. Right. And when you use that design for a torso, you can also have way more degrees of freedom in the torso than you need for the human. And we see they've already done that because they can do the 360 this way. But yeah. the left, right, and the forward, they don't really need to do crazy movements there. there there's no need right. for it. So even though this is kind of restricted. It's okay because it gives you all these other advantages. Compactness, that now means I have a larger battery compartment. I can put more batteries in it. The lighter weight stuff, I'm going to throw up in the head, right? So right. all the computes up there, that's not very heavy, but they probably have some fans and stuff like that up there because it's producing a lot of heat. Uh, and let me see. The next thing is, is again, I'm looking here at the PND robot. And right. if you look around here, you can see these lower drives that they have which are rotary drives so rotary drive here rotary drive here and it's it's kind of hard to see but they have this connecting rod that goes from here all the way down there mm -hmm. yes and then yeah. in the back now they did theirs a bit funny in that they had one of them connected to the front of the foot one to the back which is right. cool this is something that i like about their design uh agility does something like that but they end up having their um control rod sticking out a bit too much and this right. is a bit more compact and the reason i'm showing this is what atlas has done is that they've hidden that behind their covers so you can't see it so basically right. i'm outlining this so everyone can get an idea of, of what that looks like when we look at it and again this is the pnd robotics where again you'll notice what they did down here in their in their pelvic area it's a mm -hmm. pretty strong one i think it's like if not 45 degrees i think it's at least like 35 degrees right boston dynamics is not that much but they clearly have an angle there like that and also a very similar thing with the way they mounted this also at maybe about 10 to 15 degrees the offset here between the shoulder, because you can see that line there does not intersect at that point of rotation. Um, and so some similarity, that's the reason why I wanted to point it out. And if, if anyone cannot see that, then they can. So now we can see again, right. What's going on here with the Boston dynamics bot. Um, we can see they've got a lot of ventilation going on here. <laughs> yeah. A lot of movement of air vent all over the place, probably some to expel air, some to pull it in. Right. And, I suspect part of the reason is it is um, I had a chance to speak with uh, Nathan um, Peterman, who uh, formerly of Agility, right? And um, he said that uh, early on their control boards were using more power than the actuators. Wow! So these are the control boards actually in the actuators. Yeah, yeah. And and it turns out actuators don't require as much power as you think because they're just right. moving a short distance. They're, they're it's not. I mean, it's, it's one thing if you're driving on the road and constantly going and going and going, but in many right. cases, it's just kind of short amounts. And it turns out the, you know, the control boards, my goodness. It's, so that's probably where everyone's concentrating. Uh, so that tells me they, in these actuators, they probably have all their control boards in there are getting very hot. And, right. And, and right. they need to move air through it. And it sounds like it's forced air as opposed to just natural convection. Yeah. Uh, another oh, thing for is sure. These, that's the reason why I left the sound on at that point. Because like you yep. can hear it just like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can, you can also see up here, this little red thing. That's not like a wire sticking out there. That seems to be like LEDs. So when we look at the oh, whole thing, we okay. see that there's lots of LEDs kind of flashing and see that's yeah, why gotcha. showing up. You can see one there and see everything else. 
And uh, there we so, go. And we see the movement. Even after and watching it all these times, that is so creepy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you start to get used to it after a while. But uh, and you see, there's a little bit of movement down in the torso. But the main thing is just that that flip and rotation, right? That you have. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. is pretty cool. And I will and, and also, I think it's worth showing the talking about the pace. Like, if you look at the pace of this guy, he is. Um, when it starts walking, it walks fast. I don't know if you were able to calculate a speed at all. Or it's not, it's but. really hard to tell, but it seems like he's he's moving off there at an okay pace. Yeah, uh, you know, still a little stilted, not not a perfect one, but oh, it's yeah, not a perfect walk by any means. But, yeah, it's but it's uh, moving. okay. So here's a, here's a question for you: How tall do you think it is? Uh, yeah, mm. I'm I'm guessing somewhere around the five feet tall mark ish. I don't think it's very tall. Okay. But it's no in, interesting. Most most people think it's pretty short. The original Atlas was 411. Yeah. Uh, of course, the original Atlas didn't really have a head. So that right. 411 was more mostly measured to the true, shoulders. True, true. This That's has true. a pretty big head. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm just thinking if you're going to use this in ergonomic settings, because one, one of the problems that uh, Asimo had was it was really short. I mean, short. Yeah. And so if you were thinking of putting it into normal sort of ergonomic work cells, it would be off you know, below the 5% mark. Right. So it, and you need to make it a little bit bigger. And of course, there's lots of reasons they want to do it is have lower center of gravity, everything else. So if they're really thinking of, of using this in industrial setting, you got to make sure you're above that 5 percentile. And I, I think, you know, being at five foot might be a bit too low. Um, okay. so I'm thinking it's at least five, three, five, four Optimus, right. I think is five, six, if I recall, I thought it was five, eight, but I, I've just, or maybe it's, it's I mean, there's some that are five, six, seven, I think one of them is five, you know, yeah. they're, they're all in around that. Um, right. I, I'm sure it's a, it's over. It's, it's really hard to tell. It was only when I looked at it like three or four times after we're thinking it was short, that's like, Oh yeah, maybe it is good. Cause I'm looking down there. I'm looking at, it, I'm thinking, Oh, I think it looks like it's six feet tall, you know, right. <laughs> but that, that's just because you do your own kind of projection on these things. It looks, it looks pretty big. Um, but it could be that, um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's over five feet. Yeah. I, I mean, even it's just because it's such a distance to the walls back there. I was like, maybe you could use these as scale. The but only thing we <laughs> can use is if we know what the size of the matting is. Yeah, that's true. What size that's are true. those squares? Oh, uh, what are you those? Check I, you that know, out. Oh gosh, I've used those before. <laughs> and are are I can't they remember. You know, um, three foot squares or you know they something else? Yeah, because he's basically uh, well, it's it's not that small then because it's one square, two squares, and then there's feet left over. So yeah, that's that's two full like of those gym mat cells plus a little bit. So. Hmm. <laughs> I have to do a quick search to find out what that is. Yeah, <laughs> I've been been meaning uh, to do that. What are those called? Um, Interconnected playground sets or something like that? Yeah, I know if you can get them for your kids, and usually they're like uh, yeah size of a foot or something like that, or even nine inches. Yeah, they, like they come in so many different sizes. Uh, playground rubber matting. Oh man, I it's, it's the kind of thing that you gotta see all the time. And now that I want to like find it, I, I have no idea. Yeah, now you gonna look at it, you're gonna find it comes in like 10 different sizes, so that doesn't yeah, help exactly. <laughs> but you are right. I mean, we can use that to try to figure out. Um, I called it interconnected, but I think that's uh, what are those called? It's kind of like a man playground flooring. Well, let's just see what this one says it is. Yeah. So again, if you look down at the feet uh, that are there, um, a close up on the feet, we can see something in the bottom. And we can also right. see that it has the same kind of joint. It looks like a universal joint. It's a, it's a right. garden joint there that has those two moving connecting rods to give it the yeah. same kind of movement that we we see in, in all the other bots. Um, and I'm not sure if there's some sort of sensors in the bottom of the feet or if that's just the connection points. Uh, when oh, I try to look a little bit closer, you can see like four black dots on the bottom right. around the you heel. Know other, you know what else is really interesting here is that this guy, we pretty much see all of it because of the way it spins around, but I still don't know where they charge it. Is it even possible that maybe the feet, like, could that be a plan? I don't know, but there's an interesting thing. It's wearing shin guards. Yeah, You see the, the black that's oh, around yeah, there. You yeah, can it's see like how it's kind of put on there in a, in a rather right. interesting way. 
There's yeah. also some wires and other things. It could be for like, you know, strain gauge, other pressure things that they, they have on there. Um, and so I'm wondering is if on the feet, whether they have some, so, some sort of uh, strain gauges or pressure centers to be able to tell when it's putting its foot down. Right. Kind of a confirmation coming back. Be a variety of reasons, but it's rather interesting the covering that they have over the shins. <laughs> yeah, sure that why. is weird. But then, then again, there is like a hockey stick in the background there somewhere as an Easter egg. I know if you want to <laughs> slow, then fast. Yeah, that's all as Jim Chan's been saying, <laughs> yep. slow then fast, slow then fast. Okay, interlocking. Oh, okay. These are no. See, there's different sizes because these guys are only one foot squares and he's yeah you can, i know one foot stuff. exists but these are definitely bigger than one foot they they, they yeah. look like they're maybe at least two feet or more right well it just makes i mean if there's if they're three feet each then he's close to six feet tall if they're two feet each oh. then he's only four feet tall so yeah but it looks like he's at one end so i think he uh, he's covering it, it's hard to tell yeah yeah so we, we, we need someone to, to do the pixel by pixel kind of thing and right. figure everything out there but we can get a reasonable scale but it is really interesting to wonder where he's charged with because we can see we can see the back there's something in the back that someone was wondering if it, it was um i mean this is the front up. right i don't oh, see oh, an e-stop or, is that, on or i there. guess that's the back i think that's the back and we do see yeah. something around, around or, 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 yeah. or is it or is it the front it's walking yeah. oh no that's the front yeah that's that's the, that's the front we don't but we could see in the back there was something there uh, just a little bit i mean the logic would dictate putting it here somewhere with the battery pack and all that stuff. yeah would, yeah so yeah. maybe it's just up there maybe it's just a little hard to see i think so and and i, I think they have a substantial enough battery pack this that can run for yeah. several hours yeah it's not going to be over in 30 minutes or 45 minutes so you get right. a certain amount of runtime out of it but because the, again the torso is, you know it's relatively compact torso now compared to what it used to be yes <laughs> yes 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 so. yeah yeah definitely definitely yeah and oh the other thing is the number which number is this he's 001 001 yeah, yeah. 001 why are right. they bothering to put double o's on there uh well i mean why are they bothering to only put two o's on it because if they're yeah. only going to make 999 that doesn't seem right either so yeah but you know it, it sort of is insinuating that um this is designed for volume production oh yeah least. for sure now i i would think so we've what we've heard from everyone is everyone was like when are they going to start scaling up when's it so everyone is is saying that they think they'll be able to produce about 100 this year and of course, well, with the conversation that you and Herbert had with Barrington, I had also uh, with him, you know, the indication is that there, he needs a, at least a hundred, he would like a like thousand to do real world training. Right. Because right. you can train a lot faster with a real world than you can with SIM, as it turns out. Yeah. But you need a certain number of these bots to get more data more quickly. And I think yeah. they're all seeing that. They're all setting themselves up for that. They're all going to have at least a hundred bots by the end of the year. Right. And they've all talked about it being able to 10x the following year. So in right. 2025, they're all going to be making, having about a thousand bots. It's going to be really I'm pretty sure, I mean, including Boston Dynamics. Yeah. If we thought that it was weird having the Cybertruck, you know, spotting those in the wild, it's going to be really bizarre seeing these things out in the world. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's a question that uh, Brian actually asked me is like, mm. when do I think? we will see them out there and it's like, well, they'll be around. And it's kind of, what was it uh, that uh, Dr. Jin Fang was, was using gradual and suddenly. So yeah. they're going to be hidden from view because they're going to be, you know, in warehouses and, and in production areas. And only if you have to be a worker in there, are you going to notice it? But for the general public, right. we're never going to see it. The only bots we're going to see are the ones that people have probably already seen at Walmart and others that go through and do like scanning of goods for inventory right. and a few little things right. like that. Uh, and then we'll suddenly start seeing them. So again, it's sort of like the occasional cyber truck. But again, I wouldn't say use so much the cyber truck. It's more like the semi. Only if yeah. you happen to live in the right part of the country yeah. right now. Yes. Yes. Near Pepsi, are you going right. to see the semi? <laughs> Otherwise, the rest of it doesn't it doesn't exist, even if it's affecting our lives because you know the the Doritos that that we end up eating ended up being in the back <laughs> of a cyber truck. And they so these things are going to be affecting our lives because they're going to be um, touching the products that we end up buying, but we're just not going to realize it. And then right. they're going to come out. Now, this, I don't think, is meant for the house. You know, well, I, I was just going to ask you about tempting. that. This doesn't look like a cobot because there's lots of pinchy places. And like, a lot of yeah. pinch And the other thing is, okay, we're, we're guessing in the height. How much do you think it weighs? It's, it's not that bulky. So... 
you know, what were we? Uh, what is Tesla about? They lost 10 kilos, so it's like only on the order. Oh, we don't, yeah, like, 10, but <laughs> they lost 10 kilos from what? We're not sure. Right. Uh, well, I mean, they originally you know, they, said like talked about 28 pounds. Aspirationally so. to be like 50 kilos, somewhere around there. Yeah. And yeah. I think I've guessed that it might be around 125 pounds now, Some something like that. Yeah, yeah. This might be in that ballpark as well. It's definitely lighter than the original Atlas and maybe oh, a little gosh, bit taller yes. than the original Atlas. Oh, yes. But yes, yes. remember, 1X is like half the weight of a Tesla. Oh, yeah. That's the crazy like, thing. It's unbelievable. It's like, wait a minute. Where'd you get rid of that mass? <laughs> Part of where they got rid of that mass is that, you know, one hour battery life. So you don't need a whole lot of battery uh, right. to be able to do that. So um, they don't have that. And as well as the design of the actuators and a lot of the other things right. to, to well, make. Well, and the, the head is just a wireframe, basically. It's just a right. little ball. On right, those, right. Like, now, it's a ring. So, now, yeah. Now, which do you think is stronger, new Atlas or old Atlas? Oh man, pneumatics are really powerful. Um, hydraulics, not even pneumatics. Hydraulics. Sorry, uh, hydraulics. That's what I meant, not pneumatics. But yes, but hydraulics. I mean, hydraulics are incredibly powerful. So, and these are not linear actuators. So I'm going to guess that old Atlas was stronger, but I don't. But know. they're saying this is stronger than the old Atlas. Now I'm not really? sure what the metric is, whether it's oh. maybe what it's able to lift or something like that. Uh, right. So it, I mean, that's the real. Whether this thing can do backflips, I don't know, because right. you know, that's where old Atlas was able to do it, because with the hydraulics, it could just get so much power, it could do that. Right. So, well, this it's power to, over time. It was able to produce a lot of power very rapidly. Very so, rapidly, you know, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. bam, it's just like all, yeah. all that would get in there. Now, we've seen Unitree is able to do it. <clears throat> yeah. So we yeah. know it's possible with a non-hydraulic bot. I wonder when they're going to do it. Now, uh, one thing that Herbert noticed is like, this thing's already got lots of scuff marks on it. This oh, thing has it is fallen down. Yeah. <laughs> and in some ways, maybe that this is a bit tougher because a lot of these yeah. bots are quite fragile. And when they fall, they break and they're going to do a lot. And they may have toughened this one up that it can actually take the licks and keep on ticking. Yeah. So the that's what we're going to sort of see is that these these bots are going to be improved, but it's definitely not something for the home because again, the hands are are industrial hands. Right. The right. customer is really Hyundai. I, I'm sure Hyundai would like to see some sort of return on investment and being able to use this in their plants probably uh, would help. The long battery life also kind of tells you you'd want to have something that's a bit more industrial as opposed to home use. Yeah. Uh, doesn't mean they won't get there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and my, my, you know, this, some people say this is like, you know, the Gen 2 bot. Like, well, it is a Gen 2 bot, but it's the Gen 1 electric bot. Yeah, exactly. And you know they're going to learn yeah. something from it. And they already have experience with electric bots because Spot is electric. Yeah. Stretch is electric. So they, yeah. they already know a little bit about servo development and how they get them to work. So right. it wasn't that big a shift. They were just really good at kind of hiding this for the longest time. Yeah. And, you know, I just had the feeling. It's like, they're not going to give up on the human right bot space. And this is bullish as far as I'm concerned. And I'll tell you oh, why. Oh, it's huge. Bullish. Yeah. It um, Honda spent 30 years on their project and they gave up in 2017. Right. And that, that was like an indicator that, oh, it's a complete waste of time. Don't even do it. There were a couple other companies that were already still pursuing it. You know, Boston Dynamics being being one of it. You had right. um, uh, Eptronics was there. And then, you know, soon after Sanctuary comes online. So you, you have them there, but you got to wonder, it's like, well, I mean, really? And then Boston Dynamics seems like the throwing in the towel. Right. It's like, oh, we've got it. It's, you know, so they're giving up on it. And if they were to give up on it, but they're still working on these other ones. So it's kind of funny that, that they did this pivot from the humanoid right. bot to suddenly doing what looks more like an industrial bot. Right. Wow. What are they doing? They're giving up on this space, aren't they? It must be humanoids. It's just not the wave of the future. And they were doing this classic kind of deep, you know, they were like making everyone think they weren't doing it and say, whoop, here they are. Right. So what that means is like, yeah, we really think there is something here. We've seen the TAM. We believe it can be done. We know what's going on. Right. We know that a lot of the people that worked in Boston Dynamics are going out and doing wonderful things. And right. we're seeing, they're talking amongst each other. They didn't give up. This is incredibly bullish for everyone in the humanoid oh, yeah. bot space. Oh, yeah. Because it's such a huge TAM. And you got one more player in there that's just going to make it more competitive, right. uh, which I think will be interesting. Well, and, and I think there's a couple of things to point out also. Uh, one of them is they didn't, it, it doesn't feel like they were like, holy crap, we were caught napping. We had to come up with a design that we could then show that we could do this too. This is like, no, they've been thinking about this for a while. And yeah. 
they didn't just replicate what everybody else is doing. They did stuff that is very radically different. That, and, and it's a great demo of it. I mean, the fact that it's able to like throw its legs over its <laughs> body and stand up is pretty. Yeah. Nice. No. Um, I do want to point this out. Check this out. So this looks like, a, you know, like a kill switch over here. But I think this is a multi pronged um, cable. Could be. Uh, you know, tie in for charging. Could I be. Would guess, I, think. I would think the kill switch would be red, but. Uh, yeah, I'm just guessing have. since it's right there. Or yeah. maybe the I, mean, I was expecting that that the emergency e stop is always like a red button. That's really easy right. to see. Well, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. It, now the one thing that they definitely went in with on that, they intentionally made that opening a bit creepy. They wanted you to realize it was a bit different. I'm sure there's other ways the bot can get up. The question is, how yes. was that taught? Was that heuristically yeah. done? Was that something that they did with like some sort of reinforcement learning that they just put it in a simulator and kept on coming up with all these different configurations and say, hey, that was a neat one. Right. So, but it seems like they wanted a little bit of that shock value here because they wanted everyone to sort of see that we all know that's not natural. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, no, it's I mean, look at this. This is, it's not even 40 seconds. It's about 30 seconds of actual footage. The entire thing is designed to shock you yes. because there's not like except when he walks off that's about it everything else is just like what the hell's going on yeah <laughs> so yeah here you get the flip around you get the upper i mean the whole thing is just is like everything is just kind of crazy and creepy so and yeah and think about it is that, shocking um it's not just that it was boston dynamics right but that they came up with something good that this is like taking the internet by storm today. Yeah. Oh but gosh. Fifth yes. time I've been talking about it today. My voice is double because everyone <laughs> realizes that man, there there is something yeah. here. There's a, definitely a lot to unpack. Right. And um, Boston Dynamics is definitely back. No doubt about that. Um, I know it's, it's great. It was last night. It was taken off of um, of CERN's leaderboard, and then today put back on. <laughs> He's back on and doing even better. So there yes. you go. I was, yes. I was trying to see how many views it's gotten, but it's gotten this, the YouTube video, and then they released this on X at the same time, I think. So, it's, oh, yeah. It's yeah. My X feed, fun. like all, and then I'm looking out there and like everyone, everyone in the Tesla community was like, look at this, look at this, right. look at this. You know, even Sawyer Mara, it's like, oh, wait a minute, this is nothing to do with Tesla news. Why are you right. posting it? And, <laughs> and I think part of it is like for the Tesla community, this shouldn't be a worry. This shouldn't be, oh my yeah. God, you know, that's it for Optimus. It's like, oh my right. God. It's like, you know, Human bots are, are serious. And this means Wall Street is going to suddenly realize that, well, maybe this is a thing that we should be looking at and taking it a bit more seriously. So right. again, I, I think it's bullish for the whole space. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. The The one thing I did notice is that they did a great job of, of packaging. This. There's no doubt about it. The covers are yeah. very good. You don't see any of the cabling coming out that we saw in the first generation yeah. Tesla bot. But again, when you put it next to the Tesla bot, I forgot how absolutely beautiful the Gen 2 bot is. Oh, it is. You know, when gorgeous. you compare the two, that thing still looks like a robot right. where the <laughs> Tesla bot is starting to look a bit more like an Android. Right. And right. it's so all the things that Gen, the problems that Gen 1 had, this kind of still has with the pinch points and a few other things. Right. But not to take anything away, it's like it, this will probably function quite well in any sort of factory where they're going. Now, I'm assuming Hyundai is going to be putting them in there very soon. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're right. That thing that you said near the beginning where you can pick up a box and begin walking backwards and basically do the Terminator thing and flip around while you, that is a, that's a huge tack time saver. I mean, that that's going to. I mean, I mean, think about it. Normally when you have to pick up a box, you've you got to take work. a couple of steps backwards yeah. before you can kind of turn around. Mm -hmm. Those first couple steps are kind of slow. And awkward. <laughs> you know, what this yeah. is doing. And is dangerous. This is just, dangerous. Yeah. And then you, then you get a pivot. This thing just right. like turns it around and it's like pulls out of that space at full right. speed because it doesn't have to reverse. It's like, it's able to go, you yeah. pull it out. And then when you get more than enough clearance, you can still walking forward and then you pivot the torso to kind of bring it around and you don't waste any time. Right. So it, it really is. I mean, you could see how Boston Dynamics has studied because first of all, if you look at the other bots they have, they know how to do multi-degree of freedom control. Exactly. With all the different bodies. So what they first did with handle uh, that was on the wheels and going around. I mean, that was just, I loved it. It was just beautiful. It's just, unfortunately, oh, yeah. you know, it wasn't the right pivoting strategy. And they they learned about that. 
then they came up with um with stretch and right. how they can take that bot and the platform and move it around and keep the hand absolutely centered in there you know they were just i, I think i talked about one of the videos it's like there's no need for it they were just showing off but it's oh, like yeah. a really it's a flex that shows <laughs> that they just know how to do multi-axis control and everything else with their dice right. and you're seeing that same kind of of legacy that they have there that they know how to do that this whole thing everything is integrated in there because when you're doing that right. that movement of the torso is going to cause you to lose balance oh, what yeah. will be interesting is when it's holding a payload and it does that is it able to still continue to walk without losing its balance is it going to be doing that compensation right. you have to do right. that so and i think that's a, it's really worth pointing this out it's like this is this feels very Boston Dynamics. It looks totally different than Atlas One, but it's the pushing the boundaries. It's like, mm -hmm. no, we're not just going to replicate a human. We're going to make something really freaking cool that can yeah. do stuff that humans yeah. can't. And that's it's it's in that DNA, that research DNA of Boston yeah. Dynamics. And, and really again, look funny. at Handle, which is a kind of that weird. I would kind of call it, call it kind of like an ostrich-looking thing. Yeah, it was just yeah. a strange contraption. Right. And, and evidently they had, you, if you see the evolution that they had on that, they went through a lot of different designs. They were just right. like all over the place, but yeah. you're going to like that because it means like there's all this ideation that's going on of trying to yeah. see how to solve yeah. the problem a different way. What's a different approach. And what you're now going to see is that everyone is going to rethink the idea of whether you have additional movement of the axes. The argument has been, you right. don't do that because you're operating it the way you want to teach it robotically looking at right. videos mimicking what a human's doing there's no need to do more than that but we did see one or two videos where they had some extra movement in there it was like eh, it was a little bit freaky it's interesting do they need to do it but right uh i i think there's going to be a shift in that sort of mentality of, of what's right. the best way to yeah. do it and and the beautiful part about this is everybody's got a little bit different take which is lovely you know mm -hmm. there's there's no, the whole point of it is to have a diversity of ideas so that we can, you don't want to optimize too soon. And quite frankly, you never want to optimize because I think what we're seeing is there's different potential potentialities for every, even within the humanoid yeah. space of different kinds of humanoid bots. Right. Every, every time you optimize a particular design, you end up in a local maxima, right? And you think yeah. it's the best yeah. and not realize, hey, there's something even better over there. So there'll be right. different form factors and everything else. And so, yeah, this yeah. is a curious design. Right. Um, I don't, you know, some of the other bots may be able to do it. I think they <laughs> have enough degrees. I'm not, I have to analyze a bit more whether that angle down the pelvis is necessary right. to be able to pull that trick off or not. It seems like you sh it shouldn't have to be, but they definitely built a bit more symmetry in there. Um, is that something that Tesla bot would be able to pull? I'm not sure. I don't so think so. I mean, yeah. it's really interesting when you look at how it actually flips the knee around, it's actually flipping around this joint right here. So it's not like the hip is flipping. It's right, right. What they're doing is they have one axis that rotates 180 degrees, right. which is the basically the third axis down on the hip. Yep. So it's it's the one that causes what I think is called pronation. Yeah. Supination. It's the one yeah. that when you are standing up on... <laughs> You rotate your hip in such a way that you can make the knees point in any direction that you want. Right. And so that's right. basically the third servo down, which is was at the kind of at the very top. That thing is just rotating like that to bring the knee around to where you want it to be. And yeah. that's how they pull that trick off there. And, which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and they and you see they're uh, able to do that and stay balanced at the same time. Right. So, and that I, I know uh, we've talked about this to, you know, a lot and it's total speculation, but Boston Dynamics has traditionally been very much of a hard coding heuristics type of, you know, entity or whatever. And so I'm sorry. Uh, they're, yeah. They're, they're saying they have a lot of uh, realistic learning in there. Now, the other thing I want you to also notice is that when that, when they do that trick, putting that thing around, the pelvis is no longer horizontal to the ground. Right. Right. And but if you want to keep the upper body kind of straight, you need a little bit of mo movement in the torso. Right. And I think they are compensating there a little bit because otherwise you could lose your balance one way. Yeah. So well, again, for sure, that it's kind it's of leaning. side side movement of the torso is very important yeah. to balance. It's so you can see here it's straight up and down, and then it leans away from that. So as it leans it's away, clearly yep. leaning away from that lifted leg. So, yes. but but the question is, is this hard coded in there? Is this neural network training? Is this a, a I, I'm pretty sure that the balance watching the old Atlas, the way that it could stumble and recover, that that um, 
it had to have some very, very rapid. I mean, it could be just old school PID kind of stuff, right? Where it's just doing some integration uh, and figuring it out. So it's that's a really interesting aspect of this because one of the big things about these bots is not just the body, but the brains. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, what what kind of brains do we have? Have they gone a different direction with this? We don't know whether it's, you know, neural network control. Yeah, I think what is is at a very, very low level, they, pop, they have your kind of standard control system logic. Yeah. And then yeah. as you layer it on up, you start getting some things because they keep on talking about all, things are being end to end. And the end to end is like, yeah. is, um, is photons in and joint values out. Okay. Right. right. But the joint values are basically a command to that system that these are the values yes. that we need. Yes. And then that's being done right. without a neural net. That's being done with the traditional control system. Right. 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 And then yeah, there's it's, just it's the question cool. of like what other things you need to do to figure out what those joints are, what the joint values need to be to keep me from losing my balance or to, to have me right. walk or something like that. Exactly. So I suspect there's going to be a lot of things where it's going to be a form of sort of muscle memory that keeps right. everything. Cause when we're walking, we're not conscious of we're walking. We, we consciously know our destination and right. then our legs just kind of take over and everything sort of is following the, the path that we want, but we're not thinking about it. And a lot of that is just local muscle memory that is making those right. actions until we consciously say, Whoa, stop doing that. <laughs> so I think you're seeing sort of a similar architecture. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's still obviously a lot to find out, but even just from this very short video, we get a sense of, the, you know, Boston Dynamics, I think a lot of people are like, oh, they're the old guy. They're, you know, they're going to just go down and they're like, nope, we're coming back out punching. So very interesting that yesterday we got the king is dead and today we've got the <laughs> long live the king. So yep, <laughs> pretty cool. Things awesome. came back pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. they did. All right. Well, thank you so much, Scott. I know it's been a busy day for you and you have talked yourself out for all this stuff. Really appreciate it. Hopefully everybody will enjoy it. Definitely follow Scott on X and um, yeah, let us know what you think about this in the comments. If you spotted anything we didn't see. And in the meantime, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.